Welcome to the Changeover Podcast, hosted by Whiter Group, an industrial marketing and sales growth agency. It's our mission to give sales and marketing teams at industrial organizations the fuel to grow and prosper within today's dynamic and changing landscape. I'm your host, Greg Lineman Stuns. In this episode, we're talking about the evolution of SEO and posing the question, does SEO matter anymore? Joining me is Chelsea Drush, strategist and SEO manager at Whiter Group. You'll learn how SEO has evolved from a broad strategy to drive website traffic to focus on revenue generating opportunities and how industrial B2B marketers need to adapt to stay competitive. Chelsea, why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about um, what, uh, what got you into SEO in the first place, a little bit of your background. I kind of stumbled into this expertise in SEO almost by necessity. Um, I, in my last job, I started out as a writer on the team. So I was in charge of all the blogging and email marketing and some website content and kind of all of the whole concept of content marketing toward this consumer audience we were marketing toward. And there really wasn't any sort of strategy in place as to how we were going to get eyeballs on the stuff I was writing. We'd send emails out and obviously we know who those recipients are, but we'd blog and whatnot. And there was there was no set strategy when I came into that role to figure out, well, how are we gonna make sure people actually read this thing? Yeah. So just by necessity, I'm like, well, I'm writing this good stuff. I want people to see it. And so I just started self-teaching. How do I get more visibility? And that obviously at the time, organic was the best way to do that. So just kind of by necessity, I figured out yeah. you know, what at the time all those best practices were like and how we could get that organic visibility up for all of our content. What were best practices let's say five years ago from your perspective? Yeah, you know, I think it was kind of easy to learn at the time because, you know, SEO back in the day, so to speak, was semi-formulaic. If you had a good understanding of what the algorithm preferred and you could write well and your content was meaningful and you could figure out which keyword, you know, you could use the tools to identify the keywords with good volume and figure out how to write the type of content that Google wanted to rank for that. You were semi guaranteed success so long as you had, you know, a decent technical foundation and all of those kind of starting elements for your domain. Um, but really anything you kind of set out to rank for within reason of difficulty was pretty achievable, I would say, you know, five, ten years ago. And, you know, the focus at that time was so broad as far as what types of things you'd be willing to spend time and effort ranking for. A lot of that was top of the funnel traffic. You know, we, we would do so much content marketing at the top of the funnel, even going into Tangen tangentially related topics that weren't even necessarily a straight line to the product, but were a dotted line to the right audience. And that would work. So when you thought about success and you mentioned the word, you know, achieving success, what was success back then? Yeah, it was traffic. I mean, you measured, you measured and reported out SEO and content marketing success by saying, this is how much traffic I drove to the website. These are how many eyeballs I brought to the website. And sometimes even that was just good enough at the time because A, I think people maybe didn't know as much about the nuance of what else was involved in the algorithm. And B, you could reliably predict that if you got X amount of traffic, you could expect X amount of conversions downstream and you could just derive expected kind of bottom line impact based on those traffic numbers alone. So do you think people were buying it on faith that if you achieve the the um, top of the funnel numbers, you were just by virtue of doing the right things there, you were gonna get the bottom of the funnel? Yes, I think that's totally accurate. You could use organic traffic as your primary KPI and pretty much trust that that will translate into MQLs, SQLs, sales eventually. Yeah. So the funnel was predictable, mm -hmm. or, or we believed it was. Mm -hmm. We trusted it. Fast forward to today. Um, we don't have that same confidence today. What are, what are you seeing today about um, uh, what we believe is happening and, and um, 
and what's changed? There's so much that's changed, but I just want to start with the difference in that predictable math. So we've seen clients where they're losing that organic traffic, right? That key KPI we talked about or being able to rely on five, 10 years ago. They're losing organic traffic at the top level, right? So based on past experiences with SEO, we would expect to see then an equivalent drop all the way down the funnel to match whatever that decrease was. But we don't always see that anymore, which is a good thing. Yeah. So people are losing traffic, but they're not necessarily losing MQLs because, well, there's a lot of reasons for that. <laughs> well, we're going to need to talk about some of those. What, what do you think the big things are that have changed that that's now affected the way the funnel behaves for us and the results we ex expect to get when we, when we um, implement an SEO strategy? You know, I think I'm going to start with um, almost the the first change in the chain of events, right? The first change is, is the buyer behavior in and of itself, right? Because Google only can serve and react to what people interact with it to do, right? So the, the first change at the top of the upstream, let's say, is buyer behavior. You know, people are still Googling, so to speak, but the, the way people are going to Google and what they're looking for and kind of how they're using it I think is different than it used to be. So I think Google was the knee jerk first place. Anytime you needed to learn something, find something, transact for something, it was kind of, this is where I go. I started Google. I don't think that's always the case anymore. There's so many other platforms that people are especially learning, you know, talking top of the funnel and not quite maybe in market yet. There's so many other places now that have great information share, knowledge share, people are valuing the peer-to-peer -peer knowledge share more than they are kind of this algorithmic and machine-driven information surfacing that Google's so good at. People are are moving toward how can I hear from real people? How can I go to Reddit? How can I go to Quora? How can I use my LinkedIn network? Who do I know personally? I can just reach out to one-on-one -on -one to start learning about this because they're catching on to us, right? It, it seems it seems you've just highlighted a real irony that uh, we've seen an explosion of AI in well, coming up on two years, and that's pushed humans to seek humans mm -hmm. rather than AI. Mm -hmm. in, in, I wouldn't even say hindsight, we're still in the midst of it, but yeah. at this point, it seems so obvious and predictable that this would happen. Yeah. You know, Google needs content creators for its entire functionality and business model. If there's nothing to surface, what's it going to give people when they search? Yeah. So there's a really interesting issue coming to head where the content creators in and of themselves are feeling de-incentivized because their audience isn't there to the same magnitude they used to be there, meaning on Google searching that way. And then Google itself is de-incentivizing content creators from creating the types of things the audience actually wants because of the way they are using zero click results, AI overviews, all those things to just answer people on the SERP, which is fine in a lot of very straightforward circumstances. If you want to know the CMYK code for a certain color, you don't need to go to another website to find that. Right. That's that's a <clears throat> fact. You, you, know, you know, that used to be a free, easy, strategic way to bring traffic to your website. It's like as the marketer, it's unfortunate because you no longer have that top of funnel traffic option. It's being taken yeah. away. But in the grand scheme of things, we were wasting so much effort, we being marketers, right? We're, we were wasting a lot of effort creating that top of funnel tangential content because you know, even when you created it at the time, only a certain percentage of that is ever gonna be qualified. Yeah, it's, it's low quality traffic. Right. Yeah. So in a way, yeah. it's all kind of coming full circle and it's going to be for the better in the end. We just all need to figure out how to adjust to the new mechanics and, yeah. and make strategic but, decisions. But in the meantime, if, if part of your uh, energy is against building content, all of a sudden you're feeling a little bit victimized by Google. Mm -hmm. Whether you're a commercial publisher or, um, or an ad agency or, um, or a, a business that wants to get content out to its audience. You're feeling like you're being taken advantage of right now. And yeah, not, and specifically not with, with the AI generated information because right. 
Because you're feeding that it's engine. It's just, right. It's that the AI models still have to get their information from somewhere. So right now they're s basically stealing in a lot of cases, <laughs> yeah. content created by content creators. And now we're not even getting the traffic for it. Well, now those AI models are being trained on our content and only Google's getting the benefit of it. Now. Yeah. They're not paying us back. Right. So it's a new world. What practices have you seen and, and what practices are you recommending to um, uh, adapt to this you know, changed world? How do, how do we get what we want, which is uh, MQLs and SQLs and opportunities mm -hmm. for ourselves, for our clients, for anybody? Um, what, what are you recommending to people? How should they think? You know, I think uh, on the whole, the broadest, most widely applicable advice to shift a mindset is that we need to be incredibly precise and intentional with the tactics we choose, whether it's specifically within SEO or not, and what we're getting out of them, why we're doing them. So I, I mentioned earlier, you used to be able to get this reliable success out of casting this wider net, mm -hmm. bringing in this top of funnel traffic where you know that within this group of people looking for this information, there are some people who could benefit from what you offer, but there's lots that don't, right? That option's not available to us anymore. And honestly, even in the places where an AI overview or some sort of zero click search hasn't taken that basically totally away as an opportunity to get traffic, it's also just harder to rank for, even if there is still an opportunity. So if you mm. look up a keyword, at the top of the funnel that you know is pre-awareness, right? It's, these people aren't in market yet, but it's yeah. your audience. You know this is the type of thing your audience cares about. And let's say you look up that keyword, and this is a, a micro piece of advice within the tactics. You look up that keyword and you digest the SERP to understand what types of, of result options even show up on that. Is there an AI overview? Is there a featured snippet? Are there video carousel? Like what all of that is? So you're looking at their path their learning path. Yeah, and, and understanding individually by keyword, you know, what opportunities even are pre presented on that results page to try to achieve. So let's say you do that and you do come across good keywords that are relevant to your audience at the top of the funnel, and there is an opportunity above the fold still for your organic blue link to get some traffic. It's not totally shoved down the page yet mm -hmm. by all these other zero click results. Even then, okay, so now you've got an opportunity that's decent, but the effort it takes to achieve that is now heavier than it used to be. Competition's higher across the board. And now if you think about pre-AI overview, pre-featured snippet, pre-zero-click results, above the fold, there's what, maybe six on a good, a good or organic heavy search result page, six links available for you to rank for, and you're still above the fold. So you can get decent potential click through from those. Now, like, I bet you, I would love to see a statistic to see how many, how many search result pages have more than one organic link above the fold oh. before you scroll. <laughs> so now everybody wants the one and your, your return is diminishing so the, the, the farther down you go. So the, the cost is, has just gone up exponentially. Exactly. The so the so the need to be so pinpointed in what is worth me going after is just astronomically higher than it used to be. And what that translates to in reality is that everyone needs to start from a keyword strategy perspective, bottom of the funnel, work your way up. Make sure that anybody who's in market for the thing you offer, like that's where 80% of your organic effort should stay. Not only in the beginning, when you initially attack a keyword and set up the right page for it, write the right content for it, all of that, but continuing to then maintain whatever's needed on that page, grow backlinks to that page, grow traffic from any source to that page, which would bring me to another change within how SEO works that's necessitating this, but really spending the majority of your effort on mid to bottom of funnel keywords where you have a high confidence level that that is qualified traffic for you that, w that could and will eventually become a customer. And then evolve with it is what you're saying also. Really... Mm -hmm. um, monitor it uh, yeah and then stay on top of it it's not stand it can't be set it and yeah. forget it it's too competitive yeah. for that yeah what other strategies are you uh pioneering or or pushing clients and, and ourselves toward to um recognize the the changes that that have happened and and 
how that affects our strategies. So in the past, you know, lots of people would use a keyword mapping or keyword scoring system to figure out what's the most valuable. You know, a lot of the keyword tools in and of themselves are set up this way. So you go in like a SEMrush, right? And you get metrics for volume, for difficulty, et cetera. And that's kind of how you'd always figure out which ones are most worth going mm -hmm. after based on the effort. The thing we started to do for clients is adding in another metric. It takes manual evaluation to identify it, but adding in another metric, we started using a zero to three scale that indicates business value. So this is your determination based on your manual research into that keyword, that results page, understanding and inferring what that search intent is on that page. It's it's a lot of work and I'm sure someday there'll be a great AI tool for this. But taking every individual keyword and inferring a zero to three business value score. So if it's hmm. at the very bottom of the funnel and it's literally describing what you offer, you give it a three. If it's so top of the funnel, and so unrelated that, you know, in the past, you might have gone after it because it brought you lots of traffic in and of itself. And that was more valuable than it is today. You'd give that a zero. So an example would be um, we have a client who repurposes shipping containers and they make them into other structures. So they solve business problems like employees needing a safe space uh, in an oil field to rest or go to the bathroom. You know, they can make it into a bathroom, things like that. In the past, we've had enough value from ranking for high traffic keywords like shipping container dimensions. So, you know, five years ago or whatever, there was enough value and it was an easy enough lift to rank well for something like that. That gave us some topical authority around being an expert on shipping containers. But today, I wouldn't bother going after that because that's mm -hmm. a zero on business value. You can derive the intent of that is just literally somebody needs to know how big it is. You have no idea why they want to know how big it is. You have no idea what they're going to do with it. So the juice isn't worth the squeeze anymore because the effort is higher. We, you know, that was a, an easy lift back in the day, so to speak, right? To rank for that. And just the volume of traffic in and of itself was valuable enough to say, yeah, we're going to spend efforts on that. Would not do that today. So we've taken that entire past list of target keywords and re-evaluated them all with this zero to three business value scale added and it shrinks that keyword list real fast yeah real fast yeah. so um it feels like like what you're recommending is really uh highly focused on the buyer journey that really understanding yes. the buyer journey uh, much more than um the the um the quantitative that you're pulling from our different SEO tools. It's more qualitatively understanding what are people thinking about and yes. what's the language they're using when they're reaching consideration stage or decision stage. That's I mean, so important. I've been tempted to tell other people here at Wider to never look at volume or difficulty again. <laughs> because I, I don't- Because it'll, it'll mislead you. I yeah. don't really care how low volume it is if that's the right, especially in B2B, if that's the right customer, and your customers are worth a lot of money on a, you know, one single customer is worth a lot to you. Do you care if there's five people who search for this keyword in a month? If that's the type of thing that your right. traffic, your buyers search for? No, you don't care. But if you follow what's in like a SEMrush, it's going to say volume NA. And, you know, five years ago, you would have just eliminated that based on the fact that, well, nobody searches for it. So why would I bother? I honestly don't care how many people search for it. The only thing you need to know from those standard keyword metrics is how difficult will this be? How much competition is there? That's the only thing you need. It, it, whether you should rank for it or not should be just totally irrespective of what yeah. those actual keyword metrics are. So that's a really important caveat. This idea that that if you're a, a B2C business, uh, traffic still matters. Traffic mm -hmm. still matters a lot. Yeah. But when you're selling something that's highly considered, and that's why, you know, this is our conversation is focused on industrial. If you're selling something that's highly considered, high value, has a long buyer journey, then really understanding the qualitative of that journey is where uh, the nuggets come from, yes. the, the real jewels. Yes, we need to, and this is going a little bit outside of SEO, but that's honestly, I think one of the big changes too is that SEO, I don't even know if it's a standalone discipline anymore. It's so, so integrated, integrated into yeah. everything else and needs to be 
so integrated into everything else from a strategy and decision making perspective that I wouldn't even want to create a standalone SEO strategy for anybody because right. that sure like you're going to have the the specific skill sets needed still where once you have identified what those priority keywords are there's still a skill set there with how do you evaluate a SERP how do you understand based on what you're seeing like what what direction to provide for whoever's creating that page. And there's definitely, we haven't touched what, talked about technical at all. There's definitely, that's important. It's table stakes. You have to have all page speed, core vitals, all that needs to be there. But other than that, you know, the value in a quote unquote SEO strategy is way higher up the tactical funnel, so to speak, hmm. than just thinking about SEO. Like this is about, yeah. this is about, how do you reach your audience? And this is just one part of that. And it's about how do you, how well do you understand that buyer journey? And this is just yeah. one part of that. And that all needs to be considered in concert. You can't look at video strategy here, SEO strategy there, email strategy here. Like this needs to be thought of from yeah. the, uh, think about like the inside out thing, right? If you're talking about positioning. Yeah. Looking at your marketing program from a, a tactic by tactic perspective is so inside out. You're, prospects and customers don't care anything about your tactics or your formats. Mm. So if we're thinking about it from their perspective and where they are in their journey and what they need and how to get it to them at every point in the journey, that's then how you make decisions. And that then it just becomes naturally omnichannel. So it's, it's um, understanding your ICP, really understanding them, understanding their, um, their language, their motivations, uh, what they're dealing with, uh, what their decisions look like. So getting inside their behaviors and their heads, uh, getting real comfortable with their language. So we're talking about a lot of qualitative, mm -hmm. that it's it's really much deeper in qualitative than we've ever uh, have pushed people. Yeah. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna tip the scales in that direction. And then we're also gonna integrate it with everything we do, that it's it's part of your content, it's part of your web design, it's part of your promotion plan. It's, it's as you said, uh, SEO becomes um, integrated in everything that we're doing. Right, so all this, effort we used to put into creating higher volumes of content, ranking for wider varieties of keywords, all of that just needs to get moved into audience research in some way, shape or form. And then your actual SEO efforts are pinpointed within what you find out from audience research and the buyer journey. And when your particular audience actually turns to Google and is looking for information yeah. and when they don't, and then that's how you figure out when when, which keywords you need to go after and at what point, what that person's really looking for and trying to do when they search for that. What's the advice that you're giving people? And, and it, you're not giving SEOs, you're giving marketing managers, mm -hmm. marketing directors. What's the advice that you're giving them in the world that we're uh, advocating and competing with them and for them today? What's the advice you give them? We need to start Everything we do in marketing needs to be spear phishing, not fishing with a net anymore. Understanding everything you can about your customers, your prospects, taking every opportunity on an ongoing regular basis to get to continue getting that feedback. It's also not just let's figure this out and learn about the audience and create personas and create ICP profiles and draw out the buyer journey. And then, okay, now we're gonna, this is our Bible and we're gonna go act on it forever. No, you need to continue to get that feedback mechanism on an ongoing basis. And so it says that um, the voice of the customer and voice of the prospect are, are critically important, that mm -hmm. we, we've got to step up our efforts there and get far better than, than most businesses are today at, um, at listening to what your customers are saying and how they're talking about what you do and to begin listening to prospects during their journey because we're gonna learn a lot from them during the journey. Yeah, yeah. And you know, the other thing we haven't really touched on that's super important too is, you know, particularly with the API leak we got out of Google recently, we yeah. have a, a stronger understanding of how important engagement metric signals are for your ability to rank for something. So, you know, kind of getting a little bit into the tactical weeds of, we talked a lot about the strategy of how do you know what's worth ranking for and where your your true ROI will come but from. the how. <laughs> but, but the how is still important too. And what we're learning about the how is that, you know, Google is, is relying really heavily on click stream data coming through the Chrome browser, meaning 
it doesn't matter when somebody's on a page if they came to that page organically through Google search or not. It could have come to the page from any source and how they interact with that page is being fed back into the Google algorithm as part of their, it's called nav boost section of their algorithm. It's essentially taking all of that user input to say, this was good, worthwhile content or not, and yeah. re-ranking things. So there's almost like this, this initial ranking and this re-ranking going on where our traditionally known uh, tactics for how you would write content to rank for a keyword probably aren't that different than they yeah. were uh, But they don't last ago, long. But they won't last anymore because now they've yeah. got all of this engagement data, feedback looping, so you can't trick an algorithm anymore. No by putting the right words on the page. You have to truly create a meaningful, engaging experience for the people who visit that page, or you're just gonna lose the ring. You gotta have staying power. Anyway. You gotta yes. have staying power, yep. yeah. Well, thanks, Chelsea, that was fantastic advice. Uh, a great summary. Uh, I hope all you listeners have enjoyed the conversation. Love to hear what you think about this, and if there's additional topics related to SEO, you heard Chelsea say, it's all about SEO. SEO touches everything. So we'd love to hear back from you on, on threads we can follow to um, help uh, shine the spotlight on stuff that really matters in this changing world that we're in. Thanks for joining us for this episode of The Changeover, the podcast for industrial marketing and sales teams. Join us next time for a conversation about the continuing rise of video and its strategic applications for today's industrial marketers. In the meantime, follow us on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever it is you get your podcasts. And let us know what you want to hear about next time by messaging Whiter Group on social media. I'm Greg Lenemanstons. Thanks for listening.